In the summer of 2017, my wife and I were on the lookout for trying to find ourselves an investment property. After months of scanning real estate websites and driving from town to town the next state over, we finally spotted something of interest. It was an old southern mansion built in 1889. It was literally one of those old mansions right out of Gone with the Wind or scary movies like Hush Hush Sweet Charlotte. With over 6,000 square foot of space on four acres of land, originally 1,200 acres in its heyday, I could hardly contain my excitement as I drove between the two massive wrought iron gates. The house had fantastic curb appeal as it sat majestically on a slope looking down on the road below. As we got out of the car and walked up the stone steps, I noticed there was a placard on the house that simply read, Aria, established 2012. Well, that's not very long ago. Not for a house that's well over 100 years old. Interesting choice to name a house, though. I wonder if it's because an aria is the highlight to an opera? Or did the name belong to someone special? Maybe that's what the last owners named it, my wife suggested. I made a mental note to research that later, should we decide to take on a place this large. As we explored further, I discovered that it had 10 bedrooms, a parlor, two dining rooms, and all with 14-foot ceilings, and even included a swimming pool, and still very solid. Now don't get me wrong, after 128 years of wear and tear, it definitely needed some TLC. My first concern was to be certain the house didn't suffer from any termite damage, or the usual issues for a house this size and age, like black mold or water damage from leaky ceilings. To my surprise, she was pretty sound, and the upside of it all, the house was livable. So I decided Aria was worth our time and money, and we bought her. Now I will admit it did take some time getting used to sleeping in a place this big, especially all by ourselves. The fact that every floor creaked and most of the doors didn't shut easily, it provided us the perfect natural alarm system. If someone was going to prowl around, they'd have a hard time being quiet about it. We absolutely loved the house and everything was great until one night we had a huge thunder and lightning storm. That night, we were awoken to a loud pounding at our front door, followed by someone shouting, Police. Confused, I got up and flipped on the light switch to the entry hall, but nothing happened. I realized the power was out. Must be from the storm, I thought. Slowly, I descended the stairs, and through the glass on the front double doors, I could see from the flashes of lightning two figures standing on the other side. I reached the door and opened it slowly. Before I can ask what's going on, a police officer says to me, Sir, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, I say with a puzzled look. Are you sure? He asks me again in a tone that's quite terse. Yeah, I'm fine. It's 3 a.m. in the morning. I was in bed asleep. What's going on? He then asks me a question I was not prepared for. Is your daughter okay? I give him one of those looks like, is this a joke? I don't have a daughter. Can you please tell me what's going on? He shines his flashlight in my face and then says, may I come in, sir? I nod and allow the two officers inside. By this time, my wife has come downstairs to inquire as to what's going on. I'm Officer Daniels and this is Officer Kendrick. Are you folks the Parkers? No, we're the Harringtons. Are you sure you have the right house? We're looking for Ariana Parker, and neither of you know who she is? My wife and I stare at each other. We don't know any Ariana Parker. Can one of you please tell us why you're here? Our 911 dispatch received a call from a girl named Ariana Parker, and she said that she and her best friend were prisoners in this house, and that the man who kidnapped them was coming back to get them. The call ended with both girls screaming. Stunned, my wife and I just stared. Finally, I said, you're more than welcome to search the house. We just bought it and moved in a couple days ago. We got it as a foreclosure. It's been bank owned, so we don't really know much about the place. The officers began searching from room to room with their flashlights and we lit some oil lamps to help them find their way around. 
After about a good 30 minutes, the cops had searched every room of our house and we made our way towards the backyard. We could see that the rain was now coming down extremely hard. My wife gave one of the officers her umbrella and we watched from the windows as they searched the area behind our house. Within minutes, they were back up to the house completely soaked. If there's anyone out there, we certainly can't see anything, let alone here, said one of the officers. You're welcome to come back at daybreak and continue searching, but you're sure this girl gave this address? The officer nodded. My wife suggested that perhaps it was a prank. Then the lights began to suddenly flicker, and one of the officer's radios chirped. He walked to the entrance hall and radioed back. What's up, his partner asked. It's dispatch. They just got another call from this girl. She said she's screaming like she's being attacked. The four of us all stare at one another. The only sounds we can hear is the rain hitting the house. The radio chirped again. Look, I'm here. I'm inside the house. There's no one screaming here. The folks who live here don't know anyone by that name. They just moved in. Are you sure it's the right address? Well, I'm telling you, there's no one here. The lights flickered once again and the power went out completely. You mind if I ask you guys something? I mean, since you're both from here, do either of you know anyone by that name? Both officers shook their heads. Actually, we're both new to the area as well. I just joined the department last week and my partner just two months ago, so we really don't know any of the locals yet. Anyway, seems like there's nothing here. We're sorry that we woke you folks up. We'll check back with you in the morning and see if we can't clear this whole mess up. We say our goodbyes and watch the officers drive away, and then my wife and I return to bed. The next morning we wake up, only to discover our power is still intermittent. It keeps flickering on and off. My wife puts in a call to the electric company, and they tell her there's already a truck en route as they know that there are lines down in our area. I put my jacket on and stepped outside to the front porch to see if we had any damage from last night's storm. When I see the truck from the power company pulling onto our property, he waves and says to me, We got a call that you got a line down on your property. Give me 20 minutes and I'll have you guys up and running in no time. I shout a thank you to him as he drives to the back of our house. Then I see a police cruiser coming down the road. It slows to a stop and the officer rolls down his window. How are you? Welcome to Bramford. I'm Mike Clark. Nice to meet you. I'm Paul Harrington. Say, did those officers who were here last night ever sort out if that was a prank call or what? I ask. The officer's face changes. Prank? Yeah, last night around 3 a.m. We were woken up by a couple of your officers. They said they had a 911 call from some girl being attacked here. From the look on Mike's face, I knew I must have said something that really got his attention. He shut off his cruiser and stepped out. You said two officers came here last night because of a 911 call? Yeah, they were with us here for about an hour searching the house for this girl, uh, Ariana something or other. The officer cut in. Parker? Yeah, that's it. Do you know her? I did. She and her best friend Lindsay disappeared five years ago. No one's ever heard or seen from them ever since. At first we figured they were just runaways, but the more time went by, the more likely it became obvious that they weren't coming back, either kidnapped or dead somewhere. By this time, I am completely confused. But what about the 911 call last night? Sir, there was no 911 call last night. I ought to know. My wife is the dispatcher. And you said two officers came here? Yeah. Officers uh, Kendrick and Daniels, I think. As soon as I give the name, his face went white. Is everything okay? I ask. Either someone's playing a real dirty trick on you and your wife, or you're playing one on me. Officers Daniels and Kendrick are dead. Oh my God, did something happen to them after they left here? Mike stared at me in disbelief. They were both killed right here in the entry hall to your house three years ago. Now I don't know what to think. This has gotten to be way too much for me to process. Dead cops, missing girls, and all of it on our property? What happened? I asked. There was a rumor that the two missing girls had been seen here and the officers were checking it out when old man Fraker stepped out from behind a door and blew them both away with a shotgun. Then he killed himself. We searched the property but could never find anything. We'd always suspected that maybe he had something to do with the disappearances as Arya's parents had to file a restraining order against him. He was absolutely obsessed with her. Wait, did you say Arya? 
I thought you said her name was Ariana. It is, but everyone called her Aria for short. I slowly turned and looked behind me at the placard on the front of the house. And there in bold letters was her name staring at me. Aria. From the front porch, I could see the lights flickering in our entry hall when Mike's walkie-talkie went off. Mike, where are you? I'm at the old Fraker house. Is everything okay? I just got a 911 call from Aria Parker, or someone claiming to be her. I tried to get her location, but the line went dead. At that moment, we both heard someone screaming Mike's name. We turned and saw the guy from the electric company running around to the front of the house, scared out of his mind. What's going on? Mike asked. You better come quick. I just found something in the backyard. Mike radioed back to dispatch for backup, and the three of us ran around to the back of the property. Watch out for the power line. It's live. What is it? Mike asked. The guy from the electric company pointed to the ground. There, where the wire's touching. As we got closer, we could see the heavy rain had washed some of the ground away from the night before, and the power line was touching something that kept sparking and beeping. As I got closer, I saw poking up from the ground, a skeletal hand gripping a cell phone. The power line touched it again and it began to spark and beep when Mike's walkie-talkie went off. And as he answered, we could hear in the background from the dispatcher the frantic screams of a girl yelling for help. 